guys, go ahead. Can you just talk a little bit about this series with Notre Dame? Just kind of. Um, can I start you kind of? You're not going to be sneaking or sneaking up on them in any way, yeah, shape, no. or form based on you know just goods, the bads of that, what yeah. that what that means. The uh, I, I think it's going to be very similar to the Notre Dame games we've played in the past. You know, we we have to find a way to get to our game as quickly as possible. If we don't play our game, which is that get to the offensive zone, make them defend game, uh, it, it's very difficult for us. I think it was a tale of two different games, the, the two games we've played so far. The first game, Notre Dame was able to basically dictate the play. We turned the puck over way too much. Their special teams killed ours. The second game, uh, our focus was to, to get to our game, which is that you know, t play down below the tops of the circles in their zone game, and I thought we did more of that. I thought our special teams uh, helped us win that game. We killed a five-minute penalty early. Um, their coaching staff, I believe, believes in what we're doing here. They're going to try to have their team prepared that, that Bowling Green is better than the, the standings say, and we are playing for something. Uh, I think... If you look on paper, we're probably playing some, for, for more than what Notre Dame's play. I mean, it's a little bit out of their control, but, you know, Miami gets one point, Notre Dame is second or third, you know. So I'm not saying they're not going to have their foot on the gas. I'm not saying it's going to be senior night and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's a very difficult matchup for us, the, the Notre Dame matchup. But it's one that we've proven we can be successful in if we play the game a certain way. And we're going to have to play both games a certain way, not one of the two. We, we, we cannot leave it to chance by not playing well one night. So there's, that's a mouthful. There's a lot of challenges there. Um, I, I don't think our guys are intimidated going on the road to play there, but it's a very difficult place to play. And they're a very difficult team to play against, especially when they're on. And that's, that's going to be all talked about as we prepare. How much do you discuss the permutations of the yeah. standings and the points and so forth? The only reason, John, I don't think we discuss much of that is because I th I'm going to say that's why we weren't very good Friday. Because we got too caught up in that. And we forgot about what Friday was. Friday was an opportunity to play a game. And we did some things okay, but we did most things not good enough. And, Nord and, and Northern did things better than we did. And I'm going to say... We choked. We got too caught up in the in the in the implications. If if we do this, guess what? Uh, you know, instead of this is an opportunity to win a game. To win the game, there's a process. We have to do things this, this, and this, and do it hard and all that kind of stuff. Um, we let an opportunity get away from us, maybe because we got caught up in things that we have no control over. So we're we're not going to talk about that. I think our guys know. Publicly, in, 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 when we get together, we'll talk about our preparation day tomorrow, which will be just like last Wednesday. We want to take care of the puck. We're going to kill penalties. Um, two areas that we need to improve on and need to be good at moving forward. And that's, that's the focus. I know you're getting the coach answer, but we're not at a place where we're a program where we can look forward. We just can't. We're not there yet. No worries about the coach answer. I mean, that's the answer. Mm -hmm. um, will you talk a little bit more about those two units? I mean, are you at a point where you really can't make changes in personnel or well, is it still up there? Or? The, we can make changes in personnel um, on the power play side, and I think we have. I, I like where the power play is headed, okay? Uh, obviously, you had, you, had, you had Freebergs on the power play, and I, you know, I, I like Murphy on the power play now today more than I did in, in October because he's got f five months under his belt. Uh, you can go down the list. And we can hold guys to a higher standard and, and hold guys that power play time is, is time that you have to earn. The penalty kill has been uh, one that's been very frustrating for me personally. Um, and this is the same group of guys that killed penalties last year at a clip of 85%. Now, when you look at Saturday's game, both the goals were, were unfortunate. I mean, the one goal hit the back glass and hit the goalie in the back. I mean, it was nothing to do with anything. 
The first goal was going three feet wide and tipped in. Nothing to do with anything. And we actually killed a penalty at three to three with four minutes to go in the game and scored on the shorthanded. So uh, that, that sounds okay to me with the exception of two for six. Right. <laughs> you know, um, you know I, I, I don't think, I think the six guys we have killing penalties are, or the seven guys that are in that mix up front are the seven best version options. Every one of our 6D kills. So I don't know how many options we have. You know, it, it, we have to execute better on the penalty kill. We have to get guys to find a way not to grip the stick so tight where they can't execute, but put some pressure on themselves to get the job done on the penalty kill. We can look back at all the penalty kill goals we've given up this year, and I'm going to say 80% of them are pucks we had on our stick and weren't able to make a play with it. And it's cost us games. I don't know, you know, the guys that aren't killing penalties are freshmen. That, that, and these guys are playing on the power play. The Coopers, the Murphys, the, the Tates, the Mingos. They're playing on the power play. Putting all that on them is not, it's not the right thing. The older guys have proven they can kill at this level. They need to execute at a higher level. Do you think reaching a point in the season where there's that sense of urgency is going to help in that area? Yeah, potentially. Potentially. Um, what, what I... What I know we're going to do is we're going to continue to coach it. We're going to continue to talk about it, get feedback from them, and continue to keep our foot on the gas and push that we need better on the penalty kill. First of all, six opportunities is way too many. That's, that's, not, our, that's not who we are. Six penalties is way too And that includes a five-minute major, again. So that has to change. Six over the course of a weekend, I can live with. Six in one night with a five-minute major mixed in there, not acceptable. Has to be better. So. There's, there's lots of, of, of coaching opportunities in, in, a, in a statement where you talk about our penalty kill. And <laughs> we're going we're gonna to use these opportunities and try to coach. But all, our guys believe in this. this is, we're not trying to get them to believe in something they just, they're fighting us on. Right. They know how important penalty kill is. To answer your question, when, when the games, when, again, when tomorrow is not, not guaranteed in terms of a hockey game, uh, maybe, maybe we bear down at that point. We got to find a way to bear down, and, and, and I mean now. <laughs> so, Friday is our next opportunity in terms of a game. So we'll see. And, uh, I'm sorry, I want one more. Uh, it's funny you mentioned it's a, a coaching opportunity. Uh, are a lot of us, and I mean maybe not necessarily, but maybe the team, are a lot of us caught up in the man? We're seeing progress. We're seeing moving forward, and we want too much, too fast, too soon. Well, there's nobody more guilty of that than me. I think, you, I think everybody knows that, and, and that, that affects the mood of our team way too much because of Chris, and that, that has to change. I hope part of that guilt is some positive, too. Sure. That, that push and that expectation and that relentlessness is, is helping us somehow, some way, too, that nobody's going to settle. And we, we, you know, yeah, it's supposed to take this long when you, you go through a change like we're going through, but we don't want it to take that long. We want it to take this long. So, um, I, you I mean, know. Couldn't I, you also say that's part of the reason you've been able to make the well, progress I, I, you've made so far? I don't know that. I, I, that. That's for you guys to judge, not me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I hope, I hope, I, I believe this. I believe that these young guys believe in what we're saying. And now they're living what we're saying. This is their thing. Um, all we're talking about is opportunity. That's all we're talking about. You put great kids in an opportunity, and what they do with that opportunity is on them. And you can talk about penalty kill, power play, weight room, classroom, all the same. That's another opportunity. Um, I'm a believer in that. And that's what we've done. We see a kid not taking advantage of that opportunity to the level he should be. We point it out. Sometimes I point that out in a stern voice and yelling. That doesn't necessarily make it right. But that's Chris. That's what that's what they get. And 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 then maybe Ty or Barry there to say, you understand what he was talking about? Maybe the next day it's vice versa. It's me putting my arm around saying, you understand? And because some of these guys, John, we didn't know. So what buttons to push? We weren't sure. Is he a respond? Does he respond to yelling and screaming, or does he not? And he responds to putting your arm around him and say, this isn't good enough. We, we're still in the process of, with some people trying to figure that out. That takes time. Um, but ultimately, we're, 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 we're further ahead because we've got more guys that understand this is about them as an individual and them collectively. 
and we have an opportunity. We think that opportunities on a daily basis, and that's what we stress. Today's another opportunity. So that's the long answer to we are better off today than we were two and a half years ago, and hopefully than we are were yesterday. Uh, but I don't know how much <laughs> closer we are to where <laughs> I want us to be. I think we're close. On the penalty kills, Bobby Shea's goal Saturday night, sort of an example of guys, this is what we can do when we're four checking well on the penalty kill or just doing well on the penalty kill. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, Bobby Shea's goal was a seeing eye puck that hit the goalie in the back of the leg and went in. <laughs> I, mean, you know, uh, I think. Uh, I think that goal was an example of maybe getting back to John's question. Our guys knew how important that kill was at that time. And Northern had a little bit of zone time before we dumped it down and before we scored. And then we still had to kill 45 seconds off, and we did. I think our guys saw that with a little sense of urgency and a little uh, and, and a will about you that there is no way they're going to score. They're just, they're just, they're just not going to score. I'm going to do whatever I need to do. We've shown that before, whether it's five on five, five on four for us, or four on five against us. Um, I think that's what the example was, that we can kill a penalty if our back's against the wall. Why can't we take that same approach any time of the game, even when our back's not against the wall? That this is going, we're killing this off, period. I don't care if it hits the back glass and hits me in the back, it's not going in. I, I'm going to block that shot. It's not going to hit the back glass because it's not going to get there because I'm going to block it. I don't think we have that mentality all the time. I think we have it when our back's against the wall. And our five on five plays an example of that too. Four nothing, guess what? We start throwing punches and we start, you know, well, where was that at zero zero? We have a resiliency. We want to be, be more proactive and less reactive in, in, in more situations. When Notre Dame was here, here the last time they're going through a little bit, bit of a tough stretch, but you know, over the last three weekends, and it seems like they're getting their game in order. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. not a tough stretch from, yeah. from my perspective. I mean, right. they, you know, they, uh, they're, they're a good team. And on their worst day, they're a good yeah. team. So it, it's, uh, yeah, they're maybe in terms of their, their record, they're playing better as of late than they were at that time. But um, I, I think they're a great team every day. So right. we, have to, we have to be on our game, period. What does it mean to suggest that they were, they were a bad team, mm -hmm. at least by their standards? Yeah, um, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, I think yeah. That's, that's something they, they would be better to answer than me. I don't know how they were playing. I know that they don't like losing two games at home to Alaska. I know that. I, I don't know what else was going on other than that. And, and when you talk about Notre Dame, everybody wants to talk about Tynan and Lee. And, and rightly so, but yet you look at a guy like Costello. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll go to Costello, I'll go to Girths, um, I'll go to Johns, I'll go to Taker, uh, Summer Hayes has answered, Mike Johnson has answered. Uh, I mean, you go down the list. These are, this, this, is a, this is as deep of a group as there is in the league, and they're experienced, and they're hungry, I feel. Um, again, I think you're absolutely right. Tynan and Lee, that's, that's easy. You know, Sam Calabrese has been slugging it out for four years. Um, you know, Jeff Costello plays the game the right way, and, and arguably he's their spark. He's the guy that when he's in the lineup, they're a different team than when he's out. Um, those are out, those, that's from an opposing coach. I, I don't know what their people think of that, but um, <laughs> there's enough weapons there, too many weapons to, to really focus on a couple. But in regards to Castello, though, what, what does he bring to the table? I think he brings fire. Mm -hmm. I think he brings an intensity. He's a guy that can play the game with the puck and without. You better have your head up when he's on the ice. Um, he'll, he'll stick up for his teammates if he needs to. He'll score a goal if he needs to. I think he kills penalties for them, maybe. Um, wears a bunch of different hats. Mm -hmm. and, and without knowing the kid, because I don't, um, he seems like a glue. Again, I, I've seen their team with him in the lineup, and I've seen their team without him in the lineup, and they seem like a better team with him. And that's, that's, a, that's a definite tribute to the kid.
And for much of the year, at least on five on five play, you've had the Shea Sullivan defensive pairing sticking together. What's one of the reasons that they've been so successful throughout the year? I think they've got a good chemistry together. I mean, when we look, we watched tape last year of the the game at Joe Lewis or the two games at Joe Lewis. They were they were paired together. Last year, I think we, we changed the pairings more just because we were just trying to find something that that, that worked and. Um, they have a relationship where they can get after each other a little bit and still be okay, and they have. Just in terms of on the ice in a, in a uh, situation where somebody should have said something to the other guy and didn't, so they'll, they kind of bark at each other, and, and there's, there's definitely no thin skin there. They both handle it very well. Um, so I think it's that chemistry that, uh, for the most part, they're playing their best hockey when they're together, and, and we've continued to come back to that, and that's why they've been together as long as they have. Now, when you first got here, Bobby was a guy who didn't really put up a lot of points. How have you seen his game grow since you've been here? I think I've said this a couple times in the last three or four weeks that what you what we see this year in Bobby Shea is a is a culmination of of a long career and a and a very loyal career and a hardworking career. He he stuck with a program where people were jumping ship. He was a winner before he got here in terms of results in Green Bay. They, they, were, they just, that's what they did in Green Bay was win. And then he got to a program that wasn't winning and hadn't won, um, and he stuck with it. And you sometimes see seniors get rewarded, seniors who stick to it and, and, and get rewarded. I mean, he's a guy that we thought had some offense to him. That's why we were thinking about moving him to forward last year. Um, but when he keeps the game simple, he can be really, really effective defensively too, and his plus minus shows that. I mean, for a team that's under 500, him and Sullivan's plus minus is two defensemen that play as much as they do. It's pretty incredible. Um, but that, that, that's that, again, I think it's all a tribute to the kid. He deserves the year he's having this year. He deserves people talking about him this way because he's a good boy. He's the, the classroom's always been hard for him, and he's found a way, and he's going to walk away with a degree, and he's getting recognized for hockey. Which, which is why he came here. Uh, he wanted to do that, and, and I think it's all kind of coming together for him this year. Now with Sullivan, when junior, he was a guy who put up a lot of points. Yeah. So last year that didn't really happen for him. For his game, has the difference just been confidence? Uh, yes, and growing up, yeah. Confidence and growing up, which is all, to me, the same. Physical and mental maturity. Michael's a kid that's very hard on himself, and um, he wants it badly. And sometimes when it doesn't happen, he, re he, he has reacted that's made him play worse instead of play better. Now he seems to have a, a maturity about him that he can figure it out. No, he's still figuring it out. Uh, you know, I mean, that, that's just real. He, he's he's a, a year and three quarters into his career where Bobby Shea's three years and three quarters into his career. So there's still lots to learn, but I think Bobby's been good for Michael in that way, that, that Bobby's kind of grown up and been there and done it, and, and Michael is going through that process. But we, we recruited Sully to be a guy that's going to put up points, and last year he didn't. And at the beginning of this year, he, he wasn't. You know, he wasn't really involved. He's become, you know, a power play player now. He's a guy that you better be aware of when he's shooting the puck and whatever. And he's a guy that does see things out there that other guys don't see. Um, so I, I like the path he's on, especially the last couple, three months. We're going to see Andrew Hammond this weekend. Uh, I think there's a better chance today than there was yesterday, you know, <laughs> that we could see him. He went out there today and took a very, I don't want to say cautious approach, but it wasn't, well, I'm going to jump back in every drill. It's Tuesday. He, uh, he played pucks, so he, got, he had to go back and get them. Um, I thought there was some good movement there. There wasn't a whole lot of up and down, but he, his hands looked good. He was catching pucks and blocking pucks and kind of uh, get his sweat on in his gear and doing goalie things uh, and felt good after, uh, which was the first time in 10 days that that's happened, 12 days. Uh, so we, we take a baby step tomorrow, and unless we go sideways or backwards tomorrow, then he becomes part of the conversation. Chris, then, when would that decision be made? As, as late as possible, basically. Yeah, with him, because again, we've talked about this, he's played so much hockey, and, and he's not far away from being like right back. Right. Um, he's got to have a full goal practice where he's, where he's in drills live. And if that doesn't happen, then until Thursday, then the conversation maybe is Friday about Saturday, you know. Uh, but I, I think it can go. It can go till Friday. It can go till Friday, knowing that we think that you know Tommy's on a nice path and he's 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 
reacting to poor performances and he's reacting to good performances. He's a yeah, good, good, good goal, bad goal, what have you. Tommy's getting better by the day, and that's a good thing. So we have that. Um, does that mean we split this weekend? Potentially. You know, rather than throw Andrew back in the fire and make him carry the mail right away, we, we could split him up just to just to give him a chance to ease his way back in. Uh, these would be good conversations to have because that means Andrew's healthy. And I, I think we're heading down that path. I just don't know how quickly we're going to get there. So Andrew hasn't had a full full go practice. Correct. Correct. What would the difference between a full go practice be and a, and a maybe a, what he's doing now? I think as much as anything, Kevin, in Andrew's mind that he can handle that. He can handle guys crashing the net. He can handle the traffic. He can handle the, you know, make a save here and have to push across and make a save there. Those are the things that he needs to know in his own mind he can do. Because when those are part of the strengths of his game. And I think right now he's got some doubt whether he can or can't do that. 